Hi, my name is Sonja Großbernd and I'm scientist at NILU, the Norwegian Institute for Air Research. At NILU, we monitor and research air quality and climate for a cleaner atmosphere. In the next 50 minutes, you will learn about air quality and how to measure it. Two high school students from Oslo in Norway will demonstrate how they did it in their project under the lead of NILU. The project was part of the EU-funded research project ACTION, a participatory science toolkit against air pollution. Let's start! If you have seen the video teaser, you know already that we breathe about 12,000 liters of air each day. That's an amazing number. We are concerned about the quality of the food we eat and of the water we drink, but how cautious are we actually about the quality of the air we breathe? The air surrounding us is forming the Earth's atmosphere and is the precondition for life on our planet. Air consists of different gases and particles. As you can see on this slide, air consists of nitrogen, about 78%, 21% oxygen, about 1% argon and less than 1% other the gases. Gases and particles that can harm human health and the environment are called air pollutants. They are natural sources of air pollution, such as volcano eruptions, sand, dust and pollen. Man-made sources are traffic, heating, emissions from industry or construction work. Most important air pollutants are nitrogen dioxide, NO2, which is a gas, and particulate matter, which is abbreviated with PM. The particles can have different sizes. Particles with a diameter of less than 10 micrometer are called PM10. Pollen have this size, for example. And particles with a diameter of less than 2.5 micrometers are called PM2.5. In comparison, they are slightly bigger than bacteria. As you see on the scale, gas molecules are even smaller. So, both gases and especially particles less than PM2.5 are super small and they can easily diffuse through the lungs into the blood circuit and then be carried to the different organs in the body. Air pollution can cause health effects such as asthma and allergy but even stroke and lung cancer. The World Health Organization estimates that each year up to 7 million people die prematurely due to the effects of air pollution. In order to know what we breathe, we have to make air pollution visible. There are several ways to do so. In the following part, two high school students from Oslo will show you how they did it in their project. It's easy to worry about the effects urban traffic have on air quality and the health consequences that come along with it. In collaboration with the Norwegian Institute for Air Research, we students at Elbebakken High School have researched particle pollution and CO2 levels to discuss the following issue. Is it better to sleep with the window open or closed in Oslo? Our hypothesis was as follows. In Oslo, it is better to sleep with the bedroom window open than closed. To examine the air quality, we built an air measuring device, which consisted of an Arduino Uno and the Nova SDS-011 particle sensor, which measures the frequency of PM2.5 and PM10 particles in the air. We chose to also add the CCS-811 CO2 sensor so that we could examine several factors of the air quality at the same time. To activate the sensors, we had to upload a code to the Arduino from a computer. Codes that use the sensors can easily be found online and modified to fit the needs of any project. Our project was located inside our bedrooms, which meant that there was no need for either a protective box, an SD card, or a battery because the collected data could be stored directly in our computers and the computer powers the sensors as long as it's connected to the Arduino. If an air measuring device is located outside, one can easily connect a battery. Okay. 
and a micro SD card adapter like this one to the measuring device, which can store all the data that the sensors collect. The only thing is you must add to the code that the collected data be stored on an SD card. Our air measuring devices were placed in three homes in Oslo with different levels of car traffic. Location A was close to the city center and near a moderately trafficked street. Location B was outside of the city center, but next to an active street. And location C was outside of the city center and away from any regularly trafficked streets. Our measurements were made from the 16th to the 18th of March, 2020. We adjusted our code so that the air was measured every five minutes and we turned on our air measuring devices in the time course 10 p.m. till 8 a.m. for two nights. One night with the bedroom window open and the other night with the bedroom window closed. The collected data was presented graphically and compared with the National Institute of Public Health's criteria for air quality. These were the results. These charts outline the PM 2.5 PM10, and CO2 levels throughout the night. The x-axis presents the time, while the y-axis shows micrograms of PM2.5 and PM10 per cubic meter and the parts per million of CO2 particles per cubic meter. The open window measurements show that both PM10 and PM2.5 values rose during the night. The values at locations A and B were higher than the measurements at location C, probably due to the proximity to a busy road. The CO2 measurements at the open window remained evenly low throughout the night due to regular supply of fresh air from the outside. The closed window measurements show low particle values throughout the night, except at location C. Location C started with high PM values, but these decreased during the night and stabilized at almost the same level as locations A and B. From this, it is concluded that the normal level of PM10 and PM2.5 at location C with a closed window is the same as of location A and B, but that a source polluted throughout the day, possibly the construction of a school being built near location C. CO2 levels were much higher with the windows closed compared to open windows, and these passed the National Institute of Public Health's recommended levels for indoor climate. According to the National Institute for Air Research, the amount of airborne dust rose above normal in Oslo during the period this project was carried out. This was due to dry weather that whirled up airborne dust and may have affected the results. Despite the increasing amount of PM10 particles that come with the window open, the amount is still below the recommended levels. Unlike this, the CO2 levels were above the recommended level when the windows were closed. Therefore, we conclude that our hypothesis matched with the results. The research shows that it is better to sleep with the window open in Oslo. In this project, we have become more knowledgeable about the local air quality. This project has allowed us to apply the knowledge we have gathered from past projects, such as programming and the scientific method, to perform our research. Most importantly, we have learned how people without a professional background can conduct their own research from home. Thank you for watching! This is a sensor like the one the students used in their project. It can also be used for measurements outside if you put it in a casing, like this tube for instance, to protect it against water and wind. However, Please remember that this rather cheap technology is not comparable with the scientific instruments that are used in the official monitoring stations, as you can see here. Thus, the data quality is not equally good. But as you have seen, these sensors can be used very well in school projects where the students learn to work interdisciplinary on their own research projects. Nevertheless, the data provide you with a good indication of whether air pollution levels are high or low and how they vary throughout the day. It gives you a good indication of when is the best time to bicycle, go for a walk, open the windows, 
and so on. You should also keep in mind meteorological factors. The sensors we used for measuring particles cannot distinguish between, for example, dust, air pollution particles or water droplets. So on wet and foggy days, the sensor will show high pollution values for PM10, although it is measuring only water droplets and their quality might be fine. To be on the safe side, compare your measurements with the ones from the closest official measurement station ever so often to see if the sensor is still working okay and delivering reasonable data. Here you can find information about the project, including a step-by-step -step tutorial. We hope you found this workshop useful and you learned something new. If you have any questions, please send an email to sg at nilu.no. Thank you very much for your attention and take care.